I just stopped to get a sauce for our dinner. Um, I'm popping to see a friend and her baby and then I'll pop home and cook for me and Bren. I'm making sausage pasta for dinner. So this video is a bit of a carry on from what I did a couple of weeks ago about game changes in my recovery. So like things that have really helped shift my thinking and helped me to get better. And most of the things are stuff that I've spoken about before, but there's one that I haven't really, and that's how my kind of perception of my body has changed during recovery. I actually made an Instagram post on this topic this week. Right, so, oh, are you gonna be able to see my phone? Okay, so this is my Instagram. This was the post. And then the thing I really was showing was this like four year flashback thing on Facebook. So I was really healthy four years ago when this was taken. And at the time I thought it was a lovely picture. It was a nice day out with Bren. Like, yeah, I just thought it was a nice selfie. And then after the picture was taken, I had my relapse that I'm recovering from now. And I just hated this picture so much. Like I was genuinely quite disgusted at myself. I thought my face looked so fat in it. I couldn't imagine that I'd ever be able to be happy in that body. But then I just got this photo again this week as a flashback and like I'm healthy again and I think it's a lovely photo again. And I wanted to share it because when I would get flashbacks like that two years ago in my relapse, they freaked me out so much and they made me shit scared of gaining weight because I would look at those pictures and be like, that's disgusting, I'll never be happy if I look like that. And it made it really, really hard to gain weight because I saw the picture in like a different, through different eyes to my healthy eyes, honestly. <laughs> but now that I actually have gained the weight and I'm back in a healthy body, like I don't look at my body like that now. Like, and I'm not as like miserable and disgusted or as uncomfortable as I thought I was gonna be when I was underweight or as I felt during the weight gain. Like there's so much more in my life that I'm not just rolling around miserable about this body that I was so terrified of because like, one, it doesn't look the same to me anymore. Like, I am i don't see it as disgusting as I saw it then. And two, like, it just allows me to do so much more than my restricted, starved little body did. But then I kind of got trapped in it because I saw pictures of myself healthy and I was so fearful of that healthy body that I was like, well, then I have to stay underway because look how awful that looks to me. So yeah, I just wanted to share that like, for me, anyway, my experience, as I've gained weight and gotten healthy, it's not this terrible, awful thing that I thought it was gonna be. I'm not as disgusted in myself all the time. My life has opened up so much more. And yeah, like, it's just a body. Like, there's a lot more to life than my freaking body. <laughs> I slightly incinerated the sausages. <laughs> but never mind, food doesn't have to be perfect. Also, I realise some people might look at me and be like, oh my god, I could not be her size, she is too big. And I know some people will think that because I used to think it. Like, if I saw photos of healthy girls, I'd be like, oh, well, it's fine for her, she's lovely, but it's too big for me. But like, if I'd have acted on that fear of getting to a healthy weight and so not done it, like, I'd still be in that same miserable place now of like thinking about food all the time, having to have separate dinners to Brendan, not being able to eat sausage pasta, not being able to join in with my family or go out to restaurants or like eat with my friends. I'd be thinking about food all day. I'd be craving food. I'd be stopping myself eating food. I'd be feeling guilty and anxious around food. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. It wasn't happy. It wasn't a happy place to be at all. And certainly not like real happiness, like, the sort of happiness I'll look back on when I'm 80 and be like, oh, I was so happy when I weighed that. <laughs> or I was so happy when I ate under X calories. Like, no. And so I don't love my body now all the time and it is healthy and it is the body I was scared of, but like, it's just a body. It's just a fucking body. And it allows me to eat nice food. <laughs> right, anyway, <laughs> gonna, gonna serve our dinner. Right, I'm going to yoga in about an hour, so I'm just making something quick and easy for breakfast. I've also started making a patchwork quilt as a new hobby, so I'm going to make this and eat my breakfast.
literally every single route is blocked off. Like this is the second route I've tried and there is no way to get there. So annoying. They're having some kind of cycle something. So back we go. Well, that's a bit fucking annoying. <laughs> I really love that class. I guess shit happens in life, like I'm not gonna go and make myself do something else. And there's no other yoga on for the rest of the day, so that's just that. I think for me, this is why it's important to be able to like be flexible because shit happens in life. And um, like with an eating disorder, if you have to do a certain class or you have to eat under a certain amount or whatever, like that doesn't leave any room for shit to happen in life <laughs> or for fucking idiots to close whole roads for cycle competitions, like. Who even does that, by the way? Like, we are now totally blocked in. Like, the whole road in front of where we live is blocked and Dubai's on the other side of it. <laughs> what the fuck? I've come to Starbucks instead. See if Bryn can come and meet me. We need to book somewhere to stay in Paris next week. We're stopping there on our way home to the UK for Christmas. And we're also trying to buy a flat in Scotland. So we need to do some house hunting. And I can also share another one of the, like, game changer -y things that I've thought of. Um, it's again kind of to do with weight and my kind of realisation around my body having a set point and the fact it's got like a genetic weight where it's happy at. And I guess kind of realising that if I need to restrict or exercise to keep my body at a certain weight, like it's not supposed to be at that weight. And it doesn't matter if a doctor's telling me like, oh, you're healthy at this weight or if on a BMI chart I'm like technically healthy at that weight, like my body doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Even if professionals are saying you're healthy, like, are you healthy, really? Like, do you still think about food all the time? Do you still have to plan your food? Are you still scared to eat over a certain amount or to miss certain exercise? Are you scared to let yourself eat what you want because you might gain weight? I don't know, if you went for a big dinner, would you feel like you then needed to restrict to make up for the calories or, like, restrict beforehand to free up the calories to be able to go? Because, like, to me, if you're doing those kinds of things, your body's not supposed to be at that weight. Like you're having to control food and exercise to keep your body at that weight. And it pisses me off so much that medical professionals can actually like prescribe this to people. Like, here's your target weight. Like, how the fuck do you know what my body's target weight is? <laughs> and it's actually mental. Like people don't tell you to do it with height. Like the average height is like five foot four or something. Doctors aren't telling me to chop my feet off because I'm five foot six. It really makes me so angry when doctors set target BMIs that are like the lower ends of healthy because most bodies are not supposed to be the lower ends of healthy. My body's not supposed to be at the lower end of healthy and it gives me total shit when I try and keep it there. And like in my experience, until my body got to the weight it wants to be at, it does not leave me in peace and I had to like think about food all day. I felt like my body was prioritising food over everything. So just to keep my body slightly smaller than it needs to be, I would have had to control my food for the rest of my life. Like, that sounds fucking awful to me. And I really mean only slightly smaller than my body wants to be as well. Like, I can still be within a healthy BMI range and only a couple of kilos below what my body wants to be. But if it's not where my body wants to be, then I have to kind of live with eating disorder to keep it there. And I have to restrict and control my food. I have to plan my food. I end up worrying a lot about food and having to compensate for things like eating a big dinner out. Yeah, I just think about food all day because it takes effort to control your weight and hold it just below where your body wants it to be. So even if a doctor said like, this will do for you, you can stay here. Like if your body wants to be here, even if that's only a couple of kilos, like you're gonna have to live in a whole heap of shit just to do that slight bit of weight suppression. That's what I found anyway, and I've given it a good go. <laughs> like, And I've been at that like low end of healthy and whatever, and it was bullshit for me. Like, it did not fucking work. I've got to stop swearing. <laughs> I don't know, it does, it makes me quite angry, honestly, that health professionals are actually almost prescribing anorexia in a way, because to keep your body below the weight it wants to be, you have to engage with in restrictive behaviours. Yeah, it really makes me angry. If you're still living like in the confines of an eating disorder, if you've still got that eating disorder bubble in place, like an eating disorder is an eating disorder. You know, like you can't be a little bit pregnant. You can't just be a little bit eating disordered if you're living with food and exercise control. Like that's what you're doing. And to me, like that was a shit existence. Yeah, I kind of wish I'd had the realisation earlier, but it's not helped, like all through my teenage years, this target BMI 20 was like the gold standard of recovery. 
And it's bullshit. I still have to be anorexic to maintain a BMI of 20. So I've had to like let my body go beyond that, which is really, really hard when doctors are like prescribing it. But I don't know, it is what it is. Like they don't have to live in my brain. They don't have to live in my body or live my life. And if I'd have stopped at BMI 20, I would have to restrict to stay there. Just like most bodies, to be honest. I don't think the majority of people are supposed to be at that lower end of healthy, but that's just what I think. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go to Starbucks and meet Bren. I'm even walking past an exercise class, look. My body doesn't gain weight based on what someone else keeps up. Hello. stood up by Bren <laughs> who fell asleep and I was like oh should I just go back home then I'm like no fuck it I can get a coffee on my own don't need other people to justify my calories and also whilst I sat waiting for him probably for about half an hour I had my jumper on back to front and I kept being like why is this choking me <laughs> what a tit <laughs> I'm gonna sign out now. Uh, we've got a five day weekend in Dubai. That's actually 10, five day weekend, which is so nice. So I think I'm gonna head to the pool or something. And then tonight we're gonna go to the cinema and watch Frozen 2, which I'm so excited about. I'll either like get some popcorn or we've started getting frozen yogurt and like sneaking it into the cinema, like hiding it in my bag and taking it in. Brent and I really think they should call it Froggit. Like why is there not a company called Froggit? <laughs> Anyway, lots of love to everybody and I'll post another video next weekend.